we can't we, soft oat me. Hey! I did! Through the <laughs> intro, in fact! You were looking at the goddamn screen! Wait a minute. This isn't my house. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, I hope the audio's good, because I'm not close enough. But it's okay. I can scream. I can... A little closer. A little closer! Huzzah! Well, hello. Hey. I'm here in Maryland. Hurricane well... Florence is fun! <laughs> So how you been? I haven't, I haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, fuck, Connecticut. So you went on another business trip? Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play with all your shit because I'm sitting here. I'm yeah. Not to. Like look up at this the, the, the ship. Oh my god. All kinds of shit. You do do like an office tour. <laughs> oh, I didn't silence my phone. Extreme Damn. panic. I am. Look at that spam caller. Extreme panic. All right, let's go back to... Anyway, yeah, so you were in Connecticut. For a business trip. It sucked. So let me get this right. So let me get this straight. So you were just in Oregon. Had probably one of the best times of your life working for the company. It's up there, right? It was a good trip. Okay. And now they sent you to Connecticut. Now, you volunteer for this, or they just say, Haskins, you're going? There, I got voluntold. Okay. I actually had big issues with the fact that I got voluntold on this one. Real big issues. But it is what it is. So, what happened? Walk me through a day in life going to Connecticut. I've driven through Connecticut. I had to go to Rhode Island once. I never really stopped in Connecticut. Uh, there's a lot of proprietary shit. There was some hoops to jump through that were unnecessary. I've been read in on the F-22... Uh, for uh, the the panel guys. Okay. Uh, so that had like this requirement, and they would restrict you where you could go or, or how you could interact with the bird. Uh, but it was location dependent. Whereas this place to get into the entire six story mega facility. Uh, I had to show a proof of citizenship to walk in. That literally my what? birth certificate was expected to go with me. So no driver's license? No, they, they, they didn't take now, that? E even though that's, that gives access to that information, it wasn't valid. Well, when I went to Canada once, I didn't need a passport. Now Then. Then, yes. And this was after 9-11. <laughs> but it was like a two, it was like 2005, I think 2005, 2006. I think it was 2008 when they cut that. Okay, yeah. So we went there. I had to, had to have my birth certificate, which I uh, I traveled I traveled with Lauren because we were going up there to see Stephanie, Barb, and then um, so we went to Quebec. But yeah, they we went in. They they just they searched our car. They pretty much went up, they questioned us. They did all yeah. this stuff. Come to find out, we feel bad because come to find out, Stephanie was there illegally. And then they were like, "Why is she there illegally?" So they're sending Mounties to go get her. And so we were just like, it was all around mess. We end up be we end up getting there, staying there for a couple of days. She got passed because she was dating a boy who was best friends with the prime minister's daughter. So somehow we got, I don't know. Long story short. I got through with the pa with a not, without a passport. Coming back to the United States, though, easy peasy. Where are you from? Baltimore? Oh, Ravens. Good. Yeah, see you. <laughs> they didn't care. If they didn't search my car, I could have legal drugs. Nothing. It's not their problem. Yeah. <laughs> when you're leaving, yeah. it's America's problem. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's crazy that you had the a birth certificate. You yeah. You don't have any, like, twit card or any military ID or anything? I did. It wasn't valid. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that was a fucking nightmare. Uh, I had to talk with a cockney most of the week. What? Talk to who? With my southern, with my southern Liverpool. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Why? you know. Why? Like, just... Because I was a foreign... Oh, visitor. okay, okay. So well, we jumped fine. through some hoops, and then, like, yesterday... So I, I come back, I go through the whole weekend, and... Fucking yesterday, I get the email. Oh yeah, we we still need to see your your birth certificate. Could you send us a picture of it? So you came back, and they still you, needed it. 
No, I wouldn't have sent it, but you probably you probably had to. I, it's keeping one of my okay. colleagues from getting in serious trouble. With okay, that. that makes sense then. But yeah, that's that's some bullshit. That's some shady stuff. Yeah. This is. I'm sorry, my. So what's been going on in your neck of the woods? Well, we're not done talking about you. Why is it always about me? I love you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, see, Connecticut's probably obviously not that big, so there's probably not much to talk about. Yeah, I didn't do anything. <laughs> to be honest with you, Alex, I don't know. I came here to, I didn't, this was unexpected, me coming to Maryland. Obviously, Alex and I had plans to, to do a podcast about something totally different than what we're doing now. Um, there's a lot been going on in my life that I just want to rant about. I don't. I like to bitch, but I try not to do as much as I can. And I, I never wanted to use this as a platform of me bitching. And I never want, you know, complaining about some things, some views and stuff, but selling a house is horrible. Um, well, it's just that the process, that whole process happened. It's just, because you have to deal with people that you don't even know. And they're asking for things, even though they said they weren't going to ask for things, and then they still ask for things. And then at, at one point, when do you say, no, you can go fuck yourself, or I really need to sell this house, so I got to bend over backwards for these people. And that's kind of what happened. Um, we still sold it for the amount that we wanted. It's just that they they just put us through hell. Like, we had to get a window fix. We had to get this fix. And it wasn't even on a report that we got. Um, I don't know who to look at, so I'm just going to look into your eyes. between. Um, I was, it was on a report. It wasn't on the report. So it was like, well, why are we doing this? And then my, my realtor was like, just do it. Just, uh, you know, I'm like, okay. I'm spending $100 to get this fixed. And then in the end, I'm walking away with $68,000. So I guess this, I guess it's a good investment. Yes. So, so that that was the silver line in the whole thing that we made good money, um, and that was great. So September first happens. It's the day of our move. The house is already done. They they do a final walkthrough on Tuesday. Then they buy the house on Wednesday. So Saturday we're moving into an apartment in Myrtle Beach because we're gonna live in an apartment until we fix our credit and then get a better house. Um, and so my wife goes ahead of me. I stay, the movers come, they're really quick, they do everything. They leave, then they forget shit. I'm like, well, I, I can't call them back. I don't know where they are. So I'm piling everything into my little Honda Civic, which I, I got everything in. It was like a glass art table. So I got everything in there. I got my dog, myself, and the stuff that they left behind. So I'm heading down there, um, and then I have no, the car over has been overheating for the last like couple years. If So sometimes when it starts to get overheating, I just stop. Fill it up with water. I actually had coolant at the time, so I was like, oh, let's put coolant in it. It'll be fine. Um, no, I guess this was it. It was time to... I made it down the road. It was an H, and I'm like, uh, okay. And then I stopped at a... St I, I can't pull over. Where I'm at in South Carolina, because I, I go where we travel through, it's like... Remember we did a podcast about little towns? Yeah. That's why I did a podcast about little towns, because, you know, there was... I was at a little town. So I'm sitting okay. there, I'm like, oh my God, I'm just... There's nowhere to park. I was waiting for this light to turn green so I can go up there and park in that gas station. Boom. Smoke. <laughs> I'm just like, people around me. I'm in a neighborhood. I'm like, yeah, okay. This is this is real. So I sit there, and I'm going to sit there. I call AAA, because I have AAA, and they're like, yeah, we can't do shit for you. We can tow it. <laughs> we can't do anything for you. I'm like, Okay, they're like, where are you going? We could probably drive you there. I was like, mm, I'm about, I'm about, so it's three, it's four hour drive. I'm about, I'm two hours in. So it's a two hour drive away from where I live. So I was like, I think it's about 900 miles away. No, not, no, that's, that's, that's right. huge. Yeah, that's huge. So it was yeah. probably like, I don't know what it was. But See, it, if you're two miles out, you're probably around miles. a uh, No, no, two hours away. I was if you're two, two hours out, then so, you were probably about 100 to 150 miles okay. out. Okay, yeah, that sounds about right because I looked up an Uber. And the Uber would have been uh, three hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. So that that sounds about right. But there was no Ubers in this town because no one ever goes to this town. I mean, this it's called Batonsville, South Carolina. Google it. Google it. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's a weird town. So I managed to wait and wait and wait and wait, and then eventually I was like, I'm just gonna start the car one more time. And I started it, and it started up. It, it wasn't overheated. So I was just I need to push it to because we're in the sun. It's hot. It's the South. I have my dog. I have no place, no water, nothing. Dog's dying over here. I'm sitting there like sweating. I'm sauna. I'm losing weight. So I was like, okay, I got to make it somewhere. So I drove it probably four feet. 
one more bagel stop. Yeah. And then it just was bad. So I just drove into a, I finally got into a gas station, and that's where it kind of sat at. And I just sat there ga- at the gas station. So I, I saw things that I haven't seen in a long time. Like a meth deal. Yeah, some good drug deals. But I saw something that was really weird. So I'm in a town. Um, all I see is, you know, black people everywhere. No no, no real Caucasian. So I'm just like, okay, whatever. It's the South. Um, but then I saw a white guy pull up and a Lexus. And I'm like, what the hell? Is this? this is weird. He must be traveling. or I don't know what's going on. And he's sitting there. He's just sitting there. Then a, a guy with a van comes pulling up. Another white guy. He's listening to some, like, hardcore rap. He just gets out of his car. Older guy, though. He's, like, probably maybe, like, 59 years old. He's listening to <coughs> some, um, like, um, like 90s hardcore rap. And okay. He's just, you know, laughing. They get out of the car. They start talking to each other. The the guy in the Lexus goes over and pays for the gas to put in the, the guy's van. Then the guy opens up the van, and he's got boxes of stuff. So he reaches in the box, and he gives this guy two football jerseys. And he's like, yeah, I just stole these, so if you want anything else, let me know. So he basically paid for these football jerseys via through gas. So I was like, so not only did I – so I was like, that's – You were written to grand <laughs> larceny. It was just – so that whole thing, that happened. I was just a – so I was stuck there for four hours. So four hours with no – just in the heat, just me and my dog. Can't be on my cell phone because I'm roaming because where I'm at, there's no cell phone service. I was just sitting there. Um, I had an opportunity to call some people, um, but it was just like they overcharged me because I got a bill from AT and T, but I couldn't get on the internet and stuff. And that was, okay, that was about it. And then so my in law, my father in law picked me up. We drove back. Uh, we ended up towing the, the car to the Honda dealership, which I, honestly, if I would have drove down the road two more miles, it was right there. The Honda, de- and it's a Honda. So I was like, oh, okay. So I dropped it off there. It was there for four days. So we move into the apartment. The apartment's great. Um, it just has. I'm spoiled. I'm not used to cockroaches. I haven't been in a situation where I, I know bugs, and there's bugs everywhere. They're just coming out of the woodworks, and I'm just like. Then come to find out, the South during the summertime, in apartment complexes, it, they're really bad. Yeah. There's something called the pimento bug, which is a giant ass cockroach, probably the size of this, and it just chills on the stairs, walking up, and I'm just like. My wife feels bad. She's like, "Oh, you know, because it's thousand dollars. It's it's a what is it? It's fourteen hundred square feet apartment. It's it's a big apartment for cheap. Thousand dollars is cheap. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, and we're really close to the beach and everything. Fair, but it's just very. I don't know. So I'm worried about the car. So we did that. Our refrigerator doesn't work. So I gotta. But yeah, we moved in on Saturday. It was it's Labor Day weekend. So the, the maintenance guy's out there Saturday or Sunday, and now it's a holiday on Monday. So Saturday, Sunday, Monday, can't buy groceries because we have a – so that's why the keto diet kind of went on the back burner. Yeah. Because I had to, you know – Eat at all. It's just hard to maintain a diet when the temptations are all around you. It's just easier for me to spend a dollar on a burger than yeah. it is for me to do this. I know I just sold a house and we have all this money, but I have plans for all this money. So, you okay. know. Stay um, on track. Stay yeah. on budget. So that, that was rough. So they finally fixed, they temporarily fixed the refrigerator. Um, it was, the fan just stopped turning, and he said it, he opened it up. It was like frozen, so he just nailed it out. I guess it just froze. So I'm sitting there. The refrigerator started working. Okay, found out about the car. They called me about the car, and they said, "Yeah, um, I, we thought it was a thermostat issue." And they're like, "Oh, well, since you drove it a little bit more, you destroy the engine, so it's going to be eight thousand dollars for a new engine." I'm like, okay, well, that car is an 03, over 200,000 miles. You can keep it. <laughs> yeah. So I traded it in, and uh, I had to go back up there a week later and get I, – they gave me $300 for it. I mean, it is what it is. Cash for funkers. Yeah, basically that's what it was. Um, So I was like, okay, so that's behind us. Let's move on. We're just going to have to take – we don't want to spend more than 14000 on a new vehicle – well, not a new vehicle, like a, a real a, – a used vehicle that's – could last us a long time sure so let's let's do that um refrigerator breaks again and you know they keep coming out but this time we have groceries in there so we got to throw away groceries so i'm down there talking to people it's just it's literally only been four or five days now and i'm just like this i hate this my car broke down this is happening it's just irritating me um but with these cons there's a pro my daughter started school and she's killing it she's only been there for four days and the teacher's like she's great like i didn't even know like she I mean, besides her not talking, I didn't know she was autistic. 
I'm like, this is the best thing I've heard anybody tell me in the last like year. So this was this was a good feeling. So that happened. Um, and then um, I'm trying to think what else. Happened. There's a lot of things that happened. So okay, so after that, we got the refrigerator fixed. Refrigerator's good. We still have the bugs. So everything's good at the house. Settled at least. Yes. The in-laws left. Okay, we're like, okay, this is good. Um, the internet's not working. I'm like, what the hell happened to the internet? Wait, you're gonna have to speak louder than that for that. Oh, the internet's not working. What the hell happened to the internet? Um, and it's just there's only one internet service down there, and it is Time Warner and Spectrum, which is not bad. So we got the highest grade of the internet, but it's not. It's it's my daughter streams Mickey Mouse. I cannot play PlayStation. I cannot look up porn. I can't do anything. So we can't stream Netflix while she's doing that. So that's that's the problem. So it doesn't stop her stuff because her stuff is just number one priority, but it lags on our end. And I'm like, I can't live in a world where this is going on. So this, if this yeah. is my life, then I, you know, so we're we're looking into something else. There is another thing, but we never heard of it. It's like Windstream or something weird. So we're looking into that. Um, so yeah, so we've been looking for cars. Seems everything's been going well. Then all of a sudden, uh, oh, I made a comment to Kristen. I said, oh, we're in Myrtle Beach. That'd be funny if they welcomed us with a hurricane. Four days later, we get notified there's a hurricane coming. So it was Sunday. So my daughter goes to school on Monday. I pick, you know, and then they're sitting there like, oh, we're going to start doing mandatory evacuations. So yeah. my wife started working with um, a friend of the family, and she says that there hasn't been a mandatory evacuation since 1989, since yeah. Hugo. And I don't know anything about Hugo. I was three. So I don't yeah. really know. Um, but so the fact that he said there's mandatory evacuations, all hell broke loose. So Chris and I were like, let's just leave now. So we left. We hit no traffic. So okay. lucky we hit nothing. It's a longer drive than to Charlotte to Baltimore than it. Is. It's a longer drive. It's it's uh, 506 miles compared to 450. So it's about you guys are right on the 95 corridor. Yes. And there's none of this. Yes. So. Okay. And it's weird because it's just, it's literally, you take 501 to Florence, South Carolina, and then you take 95 the whole way. But Charlotte, you got to get on 45, 85 to Richmond, and Richmond to 90. But yeah. it's, you're going like this, and so you, but now I'm going through the whole state, like like the width of the state. So it's yeah. just a little bit longer mileage-wise. And um, so we did that. We drove up here Monday night. We got here Tuesday. Uh, well, Monday night, but Tuesday was our first day. And now it's like the hurricane kind of shifted. Yeah. So we're like, okay, well, Myrtle Beach will get hit, but it's not going to be this bad. Now they're a day out, and now it's like it's going to it's gonna go up to Wilmington, and then it's going to be like – then it stops, and it says, no, Rob lives in Myrtle Beach, so we're going to go to Myrtle Beach. So now it's going up to Wilmington and hitting Wil Myrtle Beach. Now, Wilmington and Myrtle Beach are an hour away from each other, so it's like it's going to hit Myrtle Beach. So I might not have a home, so <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen there. And then, um, so that, that shit happened. And then next thing you know, it, my father calls me today. I thought he was telling me that, um, you know, oh, you're in town, let's go see each other. But now he's telling me my cousin just overdosed two days ago on fentanyl, which I guess is the drug of choice here in Baltimore. And uh, he, they, put him in, they put him in a coma. He's been in a coma for three, two days. Well, three days if you count tomorrow, because we'll be in the coma tomorrow. And they, they, they're going to determine if he's brain dead or not. So I'm sitting there, so my bro my I'm here. My cousin's literally about to die. I just found out on the way to your house, like literally right. This wasn't gonna be a part of the podcast. I just found out. I'm sitting there like, what the hell is just going on? So I hope all this is. We moved to Myrtle Beach for my daughter. We sold our house in Charlotte because the schools in Myrtle Beach are amazing for for autism, the the county that it is. I just feel like ever since we decided to pull that trigger, it's just been shit. And I don't know. I don't. I don't believe. I mean, I believe in some religion. I believe there's it is somebody up there, but I don't. I don't believe that things happen for a reason. But I'm kind of hoping things are happening for a reason. I'm kind of hoping that they're literally throwing all this crap at me, because there's maybe because I don't have a job right now, so maybe it's gonna wipe out all these things and people are gonna move away from Myrtle Beach and there's gonna be a lot of jobs. That's what I'm hoping. Or, you know, the housing market goes down. And they're like, Rob, you can afford a house. Like, I'm hoping that. And then, you know, so I don't know what to do about my cousin because 
I mean, I'm I'm grateful that I'm up here in case something does happen. But I don't want nothing to happen. Um, I mean, sad thing is, Alex, he messaged me on Sunday and he asked me if I had any weight weight equipment because he wanted to make a gym. And I said no. I didn't. I didn't ask him how he was. I haven't talked to him in a year. Um, well, just because I've been in Charlotte, I just haven't talked to him. But I didn't ask him how he was um, or how life is going. I just said, oh, unfortunately, bro, I don't have any. Um, good luck, though. That's literally what I said. He's like, okay. And next thing you know, he overdoses on Monday. And I'm just like, damn. That's fucked up, man. So. Kind of curious what you're doing here. Well, I just found out. I literally just well, found out. That, so I, that That's like, <laughs> you find that out. You, you click red hang up and then you dial my number Alex I, I gotta turn around uh, there's been an event well one thing um, unfortunately um, one thing about my life it's kind of fucked up um, if anybody that has known me my grandparents raised me I'm not really close to my father I'm not really I wasn't really close to my mother um, so and that entails I'm not really close to my cousins now, when I was a child, we used to hang out all the time. His name's Josh. I used to hang out with Josh. I used to hang out with Stephanie. Um, so those are my two cousins on my dad's side. And then on my mom's side, I had I have two cousins over there that I used to hang out with. Like every, any other family, you hang out with your cousins. That's what you do. Um, we well, never hung out with our cousins. Okay. Well, yes. But. I mean, well, you know, like at least once or twice you've seen them. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. you do something with them. So I'm not, I think I'm more upset that because my grandmother I'm really close to my grandmother on my, my father's side and she was close to him and it just makes me sad because he was going down a path and I kind of went down that path a little bit I tippy toed the line and it's like if I I didn't know I never knew that he was in trouble I've seen pictures on Facebook of him with tattoos Baltimore across his chest like thug life and you know I kind of figured he went down that road but I didn't reach out for him and it kind of makes me upset because one of the things they teach you when you go through a rehab is you don't have to preach God to people, but preach to them. Tell them you're not the only one that's been suffering this addiction. I'm here. I can help you. When you see someone in trouble, you're supposed to. It's your job as a recovering addict to go to them and say that's they preach that you need to go to them and be like, listen, call me. I know you don't know me, but call me. So it kind of you know, and it hasn't really sit in it yet either. So I'm kind of like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I told my I called my wife and told her and she's like she's crying. She don't even know. She, I was like I don't I don't really talk to him. It's kind of like you. One of the first podcasts we, um, someone died. I think it was your grandmother. Yeah, it, your grandmother passed away and you were you were a little sad but you weren't like devastated. Yeah. Just because you know because of your situation with her, and it's kind of like that. I have a situation with him. I'm I'm a little sad because the people that I love are sad. But I don't know if I'm sad because I'm because I miss him or you know I yearn for him, kind of thing. And I don't know how to express that without sounding like an asshole. Like, <laughs> you, you just weren't that close to him. It, yeah. it doesn't bother you as much as. Well, should the, it? The, I I don't. Does that make me a cold-hearted no. asshole? That I just. No, I mean. <laughs> I don't. That, phone will phone works two ways. I'm not gonna sit here and say. Oh, he never called me and said, "Hey, how you doing, cousin? I haven't seen you in a while. How's life?" Oh, I heard you got a daughter. He never said that. But hey, I never called him and say, "Hey, what's going on? You're in the drug world. Oh, how's life?" Like, yeah. La- last time I saw him, it was uh, New Year's Eve, I think, 2012. So that's my grandma's birthday, too. Huh. So I just, yeah, it's just another thing. Yeah. Yeah. But. Out of that whole thing I just said, my daughter is doing amazing in school. So that's all that matters to me. The reason why we moved is because she's the schooling. And I thought she would be bad. I cried first day of school. I'm not going to lie to you. I cried my eyes out. That's my girl. That's my baby girl. And now I'm going to trust people I've never fucking met. Come on. With my child. My child that I made with my batter. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I don't want, I'm trusting you. Like, I was, when we met the teachers, I was kind of like threatening them. I was like, we moved here because you guys are supposed to be the best. So, and they're like, and Kristen's like, no, no, Rob, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm like, no, I want them to know. My child's fucking number one. <laughs> I don't give a shit about no other 
fucking child. <laughs> like, this is my <laughs> child. <laughs> um, but no, she's in a good situation, and I'm hoping this storm doesn't destroy everything. I am trying to buy a house, so maybe if the houses that are still standing, now we know where to move, because if they blast that storm... Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. Uh, well, yeah. Once in recorded yes. history type storm. Yes, so that's my rant. That's what's been going on. I know it's no, like, special episode or anything, but... Uh, you okay, Rob? Yeah, well... I don't know. Now, I'm saying that because I haven't been okay in years. I'm very good at hiding my feelings. I'm extremely amazing at hiding them. My grandfather is an army brat. He's an army man. He was in the army. He used to tell me, he used to try to make, I had to make my beds and bounce a quarter off of it. Stupid stuff. He used to tell me, men suppress everything. And I was like, and that's how people kill people. (laughs) Because if I suppress everything, I'm going to kill people. So I've been trying different things. You know, this podcast helps out. Just yeah. well, it's a it's a it's a video. It's a it's a blog. It's a, it's, it's something it's that, an outlet. Yeah, yeah, it's an outlet. And when I was younger, I had Dead Journal, which it's also Live Journal. There's all these other journals. I used to try to do that, and um, I can't really talk to my wife because unfortunately, she's like, she gets she gets so upset if I tell her things that's going on in my life that it makes her angry, and it, it pisses me off. She, she has to get angry at my sadness. So if I'm, like, hurt, she gets mad at me. <laughs> it's, it's, it's weird. I don't know. She's Rob. like... I know, so... Yes. I, I want to hit the stop recording button. No, no, it's fine. No, it's, it's cool. No, I... You know... That's I've got, why I, I've that's... got things that I would like to say that I don't want recorded. Um, <laughs> that's okay. I know you love me. And I know, you know, I'm here... This makes me happy. Even when I told my wife about my cousin, are you going to come home? I was like, no, I really, I want to, she even asked me, it was like, it was 6.30. She's like, are you going to leave and go do this podcast? I was like, I, I want to do this. Even if I technically, even if you, if I came in here and we didn't do the podcast, I still would have been okay. I just, I just want to see someone. I wanted to see you, you know. Okay. I, I, I go out of my way. There's, there's literally two people that I want to see when I come to Maryland. It used to just be you. But I kind of rekindled my friendship with Ryan Chesterman. Okay. So I do I do tend to see him a little bit, but um. Yeah, I just it's actually nice to hear that you guys are back on. Yeah. Uh, speaking terms. It's nice. It's it's weird because like, we were not speaking for a while, and then out of nowhere we just. You ever not speak to someone, and then, this is how you know you're in a you you've had a good friendship. Like me and you, I didn't speak to you for years, but as soon as I meet you, we don't talk about what we miss. We just catch right back. We just. Keep, yeah, keep the train still going. In sync. Just keep the train going. I don't have to talk to you for years. That's see. I feel like that's the best. I feel like guys, men, do this better than women. I feel like women hold. I don't know. My wife, <laughs> my wife, like when she meets a, she sees a friend that she hasn't seen for years. It's like, I don't know. They just go down memory lane all the time. They do all this other stuff. It's just easy. Guys can. We cannot talk for days or months, and we'd still be like, oh okay, sure, yeah, whatever. <laughs> No, I'm Because we're all busy doing our own shit. Yeah. And it's, we're all adults now, so. Yeah. yeah. But life's a, life's a bitch, I'm telling you. And the crappy thing is, like, you know, um, since I'm looking for a job, I really can't, you know, smoke pot. It's Because it's not 100% legalized in South Carolina yet. I can't really do that yet. So I've been, like, C, B, and D in the shit. That's the only thing with the, the RDA. I can use CBD, but I have to mix it ahead of time and just keep a unicorn bottle with me everywhere I go. Yeah. Um, but luckily, in South Carolina, every head shop sells, like, CBD, uh, you know, cinnamon toast everything. crunch. Yeah. You know, bagels. They have everything, excuse me. Yeah. And um, Which is amazing. And they have strong shit. They have, like... 3,000 milligrams, 5,000 milligrams. I don't need five grams of CBD entering my blood system at so, any fucking time ever. I kind of, you know, I haven't I haven't <laughs> bought anything that, that, that high of a dose. I stay around the 1,000 because that's where I'm comfortable at. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> so back to Connecticut. Um, so. <laughs> ah! Yes, this is a. One of those podcasts. Yeah, th- I don't, I, I don't even know how to react to this. We're at the thirty-minute mark. 
Almost to the second. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, bye. Yeah.